and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about Disney and I want to ask the question, are they really doing well or not? Now, Disney just had an excellent third quarter earnings report um, and that seemed to indicate that everything was positive and rosy, great outlook. But then I started to hear some other stories and started to see some other things pop up and it made me question this narrative that Disney is doing well. So without further ado, let's get into the story. Now, this first article here from The Motley Fool just covers the third quarter earnings report from Disney. Revenue in the quarter was up 26% to $21.5 billion, beating estimates of $20.6 billion. And adjusted earnings per share jumped to 36% to $1.09 ahead of expectations, which were at $1. So that legitimately is a good third quarter earnings report. But... Um, there seems to be a little more to this story, and uh, let's go into this activist investor then. So Disney responds to activist investor Daniel Loeb's call for changes, reaffirming confidence in CEO Bob Chapek and pushing back on the idea that the board needs a refresh. Quote, we welcome the views of all our investors. Disney said in a statement, as our third quarter results demonstrate, the Walt Disney Company continues to deliver strong financial results uh, powered by world-class storytelling. Mm, I don't know. We'll get to that in a second. And our unique and highly valuable content creation. Again, we'll get to that in a second. And distribution ecosystem. And I will say they do have a good distribution ecosystem. Under the leadership of Bob Chapek, the company has delivered this strong performance while navigating the COVID-19 pandemic and its aftermath, including record streaming subscriptions. Okay. And the reopening of our parks. Good for them because they needed it. Where we have seen strong revenue and profit growth in our domestic parks business. Well, look, you've seen strong revenue and growth because you had no revenue and you had no growth before. So, I mean, when you're going from zero, everything looks better, right? Um, now, granted, Florida has been open for a while and they probably are seeing increased attendance as people, you know, uh, well, compared to 2021, where there were still some issues with, I think, maybe lockdowns in some areas or, you know, temporary or, or at least restrictions, right, of some sort. But, um, you know, I think early 2021, most of those things went away. So who is this activist investor, David Loeb, well, or Daniel Loeb? So who is Daniel Loeb? Well, Daniel Loeb is with a third point hedge fund, and he's currently pushing uh, Disney to cut costs, to revamp their board of directors, and he's really pushing them to um, try to accelerate the repurchase of the shares that Comcast owns in Hulu, which is about 33%. Uh, those come up for sale basically in 2024, but he's pushing them to basically try to accelerate that deal and buy them back at a premium so that they can go ahead and basically merge Disney Plus and Hulu. Um, he also says ESPN spinning that off would have greater flexibility to pursue business initiatives that may be difficult as a part of Disney, such as sports betting. We believe that most arrangements between the two companies can be replicated contractually in the way eBay spun PayPal off while continuing to utilize the product to process payments. So in the end here, I think Daniel Loeb has a point. I don't think ESPN actually brings a lot to the table for and or is a good match or good fit with Disney. Um, another thing here is that, yeah, I think it would actually be pretty smart to try and accelerate this deal around Hulu with Comcast and to fold it in because that makes Disney Plus all the more valuable for people. If they combine Disney Plus and Hulu, then that means that people get a lot more bang for their buck. And as we all know, the streaming market is pretty saturated right now and it's highly competitive. Now this is where it gets interesting. Uh, because even though Disney just had this amazing quarter and everything's rosy and positive, um, they're actually raising some prices. So we look at this USA Today story, streaming costs Disney Plus without ads will rise $3 to $10.99 and Hulu prices are also going up. Subscribers to the current Disney Plus plan without ads will see the biggest increase with prices increasing $3 from $7.99 a month to $10.99 a month. A basic plan with ads will launch December 8th at $7.99 monthly. Uh, Hulu will also see a bump 
in prices starting October, the price for the ad-free premium plan will rise by $2 and then the ad-supported plan will increase by $1. So just real quick to put some numbers to this, uh, let's look at how many subscribers uh, Disney Plus has. So this is a, I think a bit of an older article. This goes back to, uh, let's see, May 11th. Uh, and this is going to give us some Q2 numbers. In the US and Canada alone, Disney Plus now has 7.1 million more subscribers than it did a year ago for a total of 44.4 million subscribers. Now, interestingly, uh, if we look at uh, how their subscriber growth went in the third quarter, only 100,000 new subscriptions were added in the domestic market. That means here in the United States. So basically 44.5 million US subscribers. Uh, when we do the math on that, then three, an extra $3 for Disney Plus means $133.5 million extra per month. But what about Hulu? Now we see that that could rise anywhere from a dollar to $2 depending on your plan. So let's be a little more conservative and let's say, so instead of calculating this on say like, you know, a, a dollar increase, I'll say like a dollar 25. Now Hulu in 2022 so far is reporting 45 million subscribers. Now 45 million times a dollar 25 extra per month, uh, equals uh, $56.25 million. So in total, when you add those two up, $133.5 million for extra Disney Plus uh, for that rise, and then another $56 million for the rise in Hulu, then that racks up to a total of $190 million extra per month, rounding up, and that's probably okay in this case. Uh, so what does that work out to? Well, that's an extra $2.2 billion a year this is an interesting strategy be, to be taking at this point in time because right now the market is pretty heavily saturated, I think. In my opinion, um, basically, yeah, the market is saturated. So let's talk about the current uh, different I events that could be influencing this lack of subscriber growth in the United States. And it basically boils down to two things. Now, what I'm showing you here is Reason's uh, Swiss cheese model of human error. And this basically is an analogy for how major catastrophes happen. And something catastrophic could be something like, say, the Titanic sinking, or in this case, it could be, you know, a business catastrophe where you only add 100,000 subscribers in a quarter, and that's basically like adding none. So what can influence these types of things and what could be going on here? Well, first of all, I'd like to show this model because you see you have the arrow going through and it's going through all the Swiss cheese holes, but everything has to line up perfectly for that to happen for you to end up with the worst case outcome, which is the error or the catastrophe. And so how does this relate to Disney and the current reasons why they're not gaining subscribers? Well, I point to three things. First of all, I point to the fact that the market is indeed saturated. You know, Disney um, doesn't just run Disney Plus, they run Hulu. And they don't just run Hulu, they also have ESPN Plus. And then they're competing against Paramount Plus. They're competing against Apple TV Plus. They're competing against, uh, you know, HBO Max. They're competing against Discovery Plus. So there's a lot of different streaming services out there. The market is saturated and there's a few too many streaming services, in my opinion, which is why we're getting ready to see the consolidation that we already see happening. For example, we know that by 2024, there's probably not going to be a separate Disney Plus and Hulu. There's probably going to be a single streaming service there with a combined price structure. The same thing is getting ready to happen with HBO Max and Discovery Plus. They are going to merge those two streaming services and they're going to have a single streaming service with access to all that content. And all that content that used to be under two services and two prices is now going to be available for a single subscription price. This means that the market is tightening and it's actually going to get even more competitive. Competition and a saturated marketplace is the first reason why Disney's streaming endeavors may not be going so well now. 
But what else is going on here? Well, the second thing that's going on here is Disney has made some serious faux pas recently, dipping their toes into, let's just say, political waters and coming out with some seriously stinky feet as a result. Now, we can argue about the extent of the backlash and all that, but in the end, this was not positive for them. They did indeed receive a backlash, and it looked like the, it brought more negative to them than it did positive. We can see from this Daily Wire article that we were just looking at, which was Disney re-releasing old movies, which more on that in a second, Disney appeared to be misreading the American public this last summer. In an exclusive poll from the Daily Wire, 64% of Americans, including 62% of Democrats and 57% of independents, supported the Florida law. So... I'm just going to say that in the end, Disney's efforts to wade into political issues has not turned out best for them. And indeed, a majority of Americans really didn't think that they were necessarily correct in wading into this. And actually, the majority of the people in Florida seemed, regardless of political affiliation, overwhelmingly seemed to support a law that just restricts what you can talk about to kindergartners up through third graders. I mean, come on, these are little children. Don't let's not be ridiculous and overblow this this Florida law. But indeed, that's what's happened. Now, the third reason why Disney is struggling with their streaming is simply the fact that I mean, have you seen the economy lately? We've had two uh, straight quarters of negative GDP. That means negative growth. The Fed is raising rates to fight inflation. As a result, we're seeing money uh, tighten. We're seeing inflation is also causing personal checkbooks to tighten. So people are not spending as much. And because people are not spending as much, that's why we're seeing that negative growth in GDP. So I don't care whether you want to debate over what we call that, if we want to call it a recession or not. That's beside the point. The simple fact of the matter is that there is negative GDP. There is a lack of growth in our gross domestic product. People are spending less money. And that is directly tied to the inflation that people are experiencing. Inflation is real. Negative GDP is real. And as a result, people spending less money and having less money to spend on these things like streaming services is real. Doesn't matter what you want to debate about calling it or not. It's happening and it has an impact on companies. So Disney is definitely struggling in the area of streaming. Now, this may not be reflected in the third quarter earnings report, but what is for certain is that they are seeing pressure from activist investors to improve their streaming performance. They are facing a series of hurdles with this saturated and tight streaming market, with the political mistakes that they've made, and with the poor economy. So is this a case of Disney getting woke and going broke? Well, I'm not going to say that they're going broke, but I am going to say that the political mistakes did hamper them. Obviously, that's not all that hampered them, but it certainly did not help. And we see that it's just another Swiss cheese hole that's lining up and leading to a potential catastrophe for them. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Is Disney in trouble or is their streaming market getting ready to take off? In the meantime, if you want to continue to smash the narrative, then smash the like, subscribe, and share buttons, and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.